Thank you very much for tuning into this show. I am um, Dr. Lindsay Scott. I'm an orthopedic surgeon by trade. I'm retired from private practice, and I write a publication now every month called Self Care. Self Care is basically designed to help one help themselves, for themselves, by themselves, with themselves. It is based on the five pillars of health, which is based upon common American dietary deficiencies. Most people will realize now that most diseases in analysis are the results of dietary deficiencies as a result of our American modern day diet based on processed foods and the lack of nutritious fresh fruits, vegetables, seeds and nuts which our body needs in order to maintain healthy. Now, the five pillars of health are based upon the same fingers that are upon your left hand. One, two, three, four, five. The first part is essential fatty acids. Essential meaning that the body cannot make it and you must get it from your diet. The essential fatty acids essentially are analyzed by DHA and EPA. DHA, that's oxyhexanoic acid and epoxyhexanoic acid. Now, these are the derivatives of omega-3 fatty acids, plentiful generally in the animal variety, and generally sourced from cold water fish oils. That's Manhattan, salmon, tuna, sardines. All of these essential fatty acids that are good for your health and maintain the normal structure flexibility in all of your blood vessels since in the blood vessels essential fatty acids make up the pliability or the elasticity of those blood vessels and allow them to circulate nutrients and remove toxins from your body every day. Now, the plant side source of omega-3s is chia seeds, which do not need to be grind, and flax seeds, which need to be ground because in the flax seeds, the content is within the husk, and the husk must be broken in order for it to be manifested and utilized by the body. Essentially, 85% of American diets are deficient in omega-3s, and omega-3 diseases are a consequence of that, including cardiovascular disease, cardiac disease, and neurological diseases such as multiple sclerosis, schizophrenia, um, and other neurological diseases which manifest themselves in the brain subsequent to the lack of omega-3 essential fatty acids which are involved in the neural mechanisms of the brain itself. The second part of the five pillars of health is the essential amino acids, which in name is tryptophan, histidine, isoleucine, methionine, phenylalanine, treonine, valine, arginine, lysine, leucine, and lysine. All of these are essential amino acids which the body needs in order to fulfill its many different metabolic functions in the body. For most of your hormones are made up of amino acids and most of your enzymes are also made up of amino acids. 
Now, the essential once again means that you must get it from your diet because the body does not make them. Hence, it should be incorporated essentially in every daily meal in our healthy, normal daily diet. Approximately 65% of Americans are deficient in essential amino acids. Now, essential amino acids can give you many different uh, manifestations of diseases, many of which are in a hormone level, for instance, uh, an influence upon diabetes, influence upon hyperthyroidism, um, adrenalism, um, gonadotropic uh, hormones or sex hormones, all of which play active roles in the body. The third portion is called um, dietary fiber. Now, dietary fiber is, is a very interesting point of, of view in medicine. Dr. forget, a fi- British physician, established the importance of dietary fiber in our daily dietary intake. And for instance, he fostered the observation that sub-equatorial African natives ate approximately peas and rice at virtually every meal, including breakfast, which gave them a sum total of 100 milligrams per day of dietary fiber. And in that, he noticed that there was zero degrees zero degrees, again, zero degrees of dietary diseases, including diverticulosis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and cancer of the colon involved in these natives. Hence, the U.S. Department of Agriculture now recommends that the average American diet includes 35 milligrams of dietary fiber per day. The average American gets 17 grams of dietary fiber a day, and we are fraught with gastrointestinal difficulties um, in our disease incidence of everyday illnesses. Reducing this by increasing our dietary fiber to greater than 35 milligrams a day is extremely important. Now, the fourth pillar is multivitamins from A through Z. That's vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. All of these are important because we are now noticing deficiency or vitamin deficiency diseases throughout studies involving large populations in the United States, meaning that we are not getting the nutrients and the vitamins that we need to keep healthy. Some have estimated that this deficiency, depending on which particular vitamin you're talking about may exceed 65%. That's a very serious matter when we have in these days and times dietary deficiency diseases. Something that we can easily absorb and easily take care of by absorbing vitamins. The problem with the vitamins today is that we have soil depletion. We have replenished the soil with fertilizers, generally nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But that's not enough to replenish the soil, and we get dilution of nutrients in the soil progressive from every year. Some of 
have estimated that today the nutrients from one apple is now I'm sorry from 10 apples today is equivalent to one apple in 1950 which shows the deterioration of the soil in which we're growing our crops and our produce hence supplementation has come into vogue New, um, current examinations and studies have revealed that what we thought was the RDA or recommended daily allowance is virtually insufficient for new studies have shown that antioxidants are really multiple dosages of the RDA in other words a higher dosage of those vitamins which we thought were minimal for the RDA represents where this amount would be the minimal amount to deter deficiency diseases in the body so we have to elevate that where the body is thriving with adequate nutrients to heal its own self. This is further um, uh, aggravated by the fact that vitamins have to be of a certain source. In other words, it must be in a special chemicalization formula wherein they can be utilized by the body called isomers so you have a D which is dextrose or L levo rotary vitamins only one of which really works on the body so therefore they have been regulated into that which is recommended for indigestion and those that are not recommended for ingestion those are extremely important the um, fifth pillar of health is probably the most important and it's called the minerals there are approximately 1755 minerals in the human body which the body needs in medical school I was taught that the interstitial fluids, that is the fluid between the cells in the body, were virtually identical to that of seawater. In other words, we were seawater covered by skin. However, drinking seawater dehydrates the gastrointestinal tract and is not recommended. However, it can be absorbed in the body by going by the seashore and soaking your foot in the sea salts and in about five or ten minutes you started feeling well and in about a week you started feeling real well and about a month they think you've been to a health food uh, camp you felt so well what happens is that whatever minerals that the body needs into its bloodstream is absorbed directly through the skin in exact amounts into the bloodstream and the healthy blood concentration is restored now this does not necessarily go to the bone stores which are in the bone itself this must be stored up over a period of time that's why you become increasingly healthy as you start soaking in the sea salts every day by the seashore. This is particularly important in many different diseases in the body. For instance, there are 144 different diseases associated with calcium alone. Diabetes is associated with a lack of vanadium and chromium 
in the body. In, f- in fact, the University of Toronto has gone so far as to say that the action of insulin alone could be replaced by the mineral vanadium. And the list goes on and on. The real important point is that the American public is about 95% deficient in one or more minerals out of the 150 that are identified in the body, including, including major, minor, and trace minerals, all of which are necessary to produce health in the body. One of the characteristic things that we find every year with mineral concentration is ball players dropping dead on a basketball court, track field, football field, gridiron, and other sorts of sports from heart attacks. What happens is when the body sweats, it not only sweats out moisture, but it also sweats out minerals as well. And in that, there is one mineral that is extremely important. It's called selenium. When you sweat, you sweat out selenium. Now, there's a very narrow margin of normality in the body. And when this normalcy is um, prohibited by a low source of selenium in the body, the body undergoes horrendous reactions, one of which is a selenium deficiency myopathic heart attack. In other words, a low selenium will give you a myopathic heart attack. And this is where many of the athletes die on the field. There was a time when we announced that we had sea salts on the bench in which during hot weather and in profuse uh, respirations the athletes were given sea salts in order to replenish the, the minerals in their body. Somehow that went off because table salt is not really sea salt. Table salt is dried seawater with all the minerals taken out with the exception of sodium chloride and left with sodium chloride, which is insufficient for replacing minerals in the body. Further, this has been countered by just commercial um, initiations by um, Gatorade and several other other drinks which are really inferior to natural sea salts which contain all the minerals that your body would need. When a, when a farmer opens up a field to his cattle, the first thing he puts out is a salt block. And the cows go to those salt blocks and they eat the salt from the block and remain healthy. However, we have not done that as humans. And we have not sought how to replace minerals that have been perfused through sweat from the body and need to be replaced. Hence, we should bring back the old custom of taking sea salts. Now, all of this minerals and the diseases from minerals are really undermined by the fact that 95% of Americans are deficient in one mineral or another. And therein lies the problem. Because if you're deficient in one mineral, 
for 10 years, you'll be deficient in 10 more minerals. And we have all seen people that have gone the downhill course, suffering from one level of health to a lower level of health sequentially until the ultimate death itself. So replacing the electrolytes in the body is of extreme importance. As a matter of fact, Dr. Norman Shelty has said that whenever someone is sick, they are either deficient or both of intracellular magnesium and glutathione. Now, glutathione is a metabolic substances or nutrient in the body, generally sourced in cabbage. The the mineral selenium is as we have already pointed out, could be deficient in those athletes that sweat. But there's another mineral that is extremely important. It's called magnesium. Most enzymatic reactions in the body are accompanied by magnesium. Most people do not realize that Epsom salts, old-fashioned Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate. So when you get sick, one of the first things to do is to replace intracellular magnesium. That's inside the cell, not outside the cell. So you start soaking in Epsom salts. And this increases the magnesium in your body. Also increases the energy radical in the body called sulfates. Now, when one soaks in this every day, one can add to it sea salts, which includes the other minerals. Many people have known the elderly and have known at least one or two of them that live to be an old age, perfectly healthy, haven't seen the doctor, have good eyesight, have good mental um, facilities, and don't get sick. On a study of genterians, those over 100 years of age, it was found that they all in, enjoyed a higher level of glutathione in the body. Now, glutathione is plentiful in the cabbage family, especially cabbage. And if you question these people very closely, you will find that out of these genterians, these people that stay healthy, didn't have tumors, didn't have cataracts, good eyesight, they ate cabbage at least once or twice a week. So, when you are confronted with illnesses these days, especially along the mineral lines, you should seriously consider soaking in Epsom salts, with sea salts added, if you will, and eating cabbage at least twice a week. This is extremely healthy for you and will underlie your body's ability to heal itself because that's what the body does. It has been said by many that medicine and physicians do not cure patients. They set it up. But it's the body itself that heals and it's the body itself that must come to finally healing the body to its normal healthy state. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I thank you for your um, ability to listen to this long dissertation 
on your health because your health should be taken back to you out from outsiders back into your own hands by yourself for yourself with yourself along with what I preach over and over with different aspects in my monthly publication called self-care I hope you follow along those lines of self-care please be reminded that we have a website and it's called selfcareforyou.com selfcareforyou.com has the many articles that I have produced in many different forms in the text format in the PowerPoint format in video format audio format all which can be downloaded from the site and we hope you pay attention to exactly that subscribe because it can only be to your benefit and you will hardly find the kind of information that you find at that website in any other and for that I thank you for listening Dr. Lindsay Scott and please pay attention to our next program for we will talk about one point and another all of which you can use today, tomorrow and forever Thank you, Dr. Lindsay Scott.